Hi, so for today we're going to talk about ghost sidel. So this is a basically a uh, continuation part of what we have studied all about uh, numerical methods. Uh, from our previous video, we have shown how to do uh, Gauss-Jacobi in solving systems of linear equation. But for now, we're going to use ghost sidel which is not really a different way, but uh, there's a difference. There's a small difference uh, in using gauss seidel and Gauss-Jacobi, whereas yung gauss Seidel uses the very latest value of x, y, and z uh, in terms of three equations to unknowns. So the steps are still the same. We have to arrange the given systems of linear equation in diagonally dominant, meaning the diagonals of our, main, uh, our unknowns or equation must be dominant, has a greatest value. Okay. Number two, we have to isolate one unknown in each of the equations. So for the first equation, in, in case of a three equations, the unknowns, we have to isolate x for the first equation. Then for our second equation, we have to isolate y. And for our third equation, we have to isolate z. So that would be our equations in solving later on for our iterations. So we have to initialize number three. We have to initialize a value for the unknowns of zero. So initializing the values of x, y, and z as zeros, then computing it for our very first iteration. Then perform the iteration until the values of the unknowns don't diverge anymore. Okay, let's get started. Our example is still the same example that we have used on the Gauss uh, Jacobi for our last video. So we have here a given of system of linear equation. This so again. Uh, this given is already in diagonally dominant form. So, yeah. So, we have 19 that is greater than 13 plus 14. 22 is greater than 4 plus 13. And 17 is greater than 8 plus 8, which is 16. Okay? So, expressing this equation, first equation, in terms of x, we have here the first equation for x. Uh, oops. We have here the first equation for our x. This is our equation. Okay. For our y here, so isolating y for our second equation, we have here the values. And of course, isolating z for our uh, third equation, we have here the equation. So what are we going to do? So we already, again, make a table for gauss seidel where in our zero iteration, zero iteration, will be initializing the values of x, y, and z as zeros. Then we're going to compute the for the first iteration using these values of zero. So we have here for our first iteration, what are we going to do? First iteration is that we have the values for x is equals to 1, 1, 1 plus 13 of 0 minus 14 times 0 divided by 19. Okay, so our answer should be again 5.842 in three decimals. So we're going to write it for our table. So that is 5.842. Okay, 5.842. So what are we going to do next is for our y, we have the values negative 1, 2, 8, minus 4, the x that we're going to use here is not really zero, but it's the value that we have gotten here, okay? So we will use the latest value of x rather than for every iteration because we have seen that in Gauss-Jacobi. That is the difference between Jacobi or Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel. So for Gauss-Seidel, we're going to use the, the present, the most recent value of x. So that should be, 4x, 5.842, minus, okay, so, or plus, plus 13, the value of z is still 0 because you have nothing, uh, uh, we have not yet computed for the value of z. So, divided by 22, so that should be equal to negative 6.880. So, we must write that. In our table, negative 6.880, negative 6.880. So that should be our value, okay? And again, in computing for our z, we have here z is equals to 10 minus 8. 
again the value of x the recent value of x that is 5.842 minus 8y and again we're going to use this y negative 6.880 divided by I think so 17 so according to our equation okay so that, that is that value should be 1.077 okay so again we're going to write it up in our table 1.077 for our second iteration we shall be performing the same process for our second iteration second iteration so we have now x is equals to 111 plus 13 of the recent value of y. And again, that is negative 6.880 minus 4z. Minus 4z, the z that we're going to use is now 1.077. And that should be divided by 19. Okay? This is our new value for x. So that should be 0 0.908. So for our y, again, we're going to compute negative 128 minus 4x. Again, if this is the x, this is the recent value or the latest value for x. So, that, so we're going to use that 0 0.908 okay, plus 13 the value of the very recent value of z so 1.077 1.077 and of course we shall be getting an answer of negative 5.347 so for z ah of course this is divided by i'm so sorry divided by 22 okay so for z we have 10 minus 8x, the value of the very recent value of x, 0 0.908 minus 8, the recent value of y, negative 5.347, divided by 17. And our value should be 2.677. So, writing it in our uh, table, we have here uh, 0 0.908 negative 5.347 and we have 2.677 again uh computing for the third time okay computing for the third time for our third iteration so for our third iteration the same thing just be very careful that what are you going to use for your values of x and y are the very recent values so 111 plus 13 times the y, our recent value of y is negative 5.347 minus 4 z, the value of z 2.677 divided by, of course, 19. Okay, that is our for our third iteration. So we have 1.620. So for y, negative 128. Okay, minus 4, 4 times the x, that is the 1.620, okay, plus 13z, our uh, latest value of z is 2.677, again, 2.677, divided by 22, 1.620 divided by 22, uh, I thought divide the, the, the whole equation that should be equal to negative 4.531 and for our value of z we have 10 minus 8 the value of x 1.620 minus 8 times the, the recent value of y negative 4.531 divided by of course 17 so that is equal to 1.958 and again we're going to write it up on our table of values. So we have now 1.620, negative 4.531, and we have 1.958. So for our fourth 
iteration, again, I'll be solving only uh, up to fifth iteration, then uh, you will be the one responsible for solving the other iterations, okay? Until we arrive at a value that is not diverging, okay? So we have, still we have... Uh, 1, 1, 1 plus 13, the value of our very recent y is negative 4.531, okay? Uh, minus the 4z, which is the recent value of z, 1.958. That is divided by, uh, again, 19. So our value of x should be 2.5. 2.330 So for value of y that is negative 128 minus uh, 4 minus 4 times the very recent value of x 2.330 plus 13 the recent value of z is 1.958 That is divided by 22 if I'm not mistaken Okay, I agree. That is 22. Okay, so our value 2.330, okay, will be preceded by, or value for y is negative 5.085. Okay, and for z, we have 10 minus 8 times the recent value of x, 2.330, minus 8, the recent value of y, 5.085, 8y, divided by 17, and our value for z in the fourth iteration should be 1.885. And again, we're going to write that okay, on our table. So we have here for the fourth iteration 2.330, then negative 5.085, okay, and then 1.885. So for our fifth iteration, what are we going to do is that again perform the operation again okay so we have x is equals to 111 plus 13 the recent value of y of course is negative 5.085 okay minus 4 times z 1.885 okay that is our value divided by of course 19 so our value should be on the fifth iteration of x that is 1.966 okay and y is equals to negative 128 minus 4 times the value of x 1.966 this value plus 13 the value of z is 1.885 divided by 22 and our answer for y should be in the fifth iteration negative 5.062 okay and for the value of z we have 10 minus 8 times the x 1.966 minus 8 times the value of y negative 5.062 divided by of course 17 so our value for z in the fifth iteration should be 2.045 okay oops so for our table for our fifth iteration we have 1.966 negative 5.062 okay and then we have 1.885 so as you can see here, if you're going to round this off, okay, well, well exactly, the, the answer here is the same as for the ghost Jacobi because we have the same given. Okay, the answer here should be 2, negative 5, and 2. Honestly, if you're going to continue this up to, let's say, 9 iteration, let me just uh, write the values. So 1.948, that is your job to compute that, okay, negative 4.8. Uh, 964 and we have 2.008 for 7 iteration we have 2.023 for the 
y negative 4.999 almost negative 5 so 1.989 for z so we have for 8 iteration we have 2.003 we have negative 5.007 we have 2.002 okay and for 9 iteration we have 1.995 negative 4.998 and we have 2.001 from here we can make a guess that the values is 2 negative 5 and 2 well of course if we're going to continue this let's say up to let's say 20 iterations so we must get an answer of 2 negative 5 or 2 20 iterations or more let's say up to 100 okay we shall get an answer of 2, negative 5, and 2. Okay, the answer we get is still the same for Ghost Jacobi on our, on, on our uh, previous video a while ago. But uh, the process is still the same. Okay? The, the point is there is, the, there is only a small difference between Ghost Jacobi and Ghost Sider. Whereas in Ghost Jacobi, for every uh, iteration, you're going to use... Uh, the x, y, and z. Okay? For Gauss Seidel, you're going to use the very recent values for the iterations of x, y, and z. Okay? So, but the answer should still be the same. Okay? It's, it will be the same because the work of Gauss Jacobi and Gauss Seidel is to calculate or the op approximate or to approximate the values of our unknown in a given systems of linear equation so here is our answer two negative five and two and i hope you learned something for for today in gauss seidel and i do hope that you will be computing this uh iterations five to nine or maybe ten to twenty if you would like if you would really like to see the answer two negative five and two thank you so much for listening this is engineer abat god bless you